Okay, so in the last lecture, we went over what was underneath the pages menu item. Today, we're going to go over design. So if you go into design, there's quite a few options here. We'll go through each one. So under logo and title, you have the option to change the website title. Right now, I have it set to Udemy website, which is also what shows up right here. Now, you could also add a tagline, so something like demo website. Now, some templates will actually use this in the actual like home page except right now uh, this template doesn't. So if you go down a little bit, there's logo image. This is where you would upload an image that you have, or you can create a logo. Now I'll show you what this looks like. I wouldn't really recommend it because it, do it actually doesn't have that many options. So you'd put in something like Udemy and you basically just pick an image that you like and that's it. And you can change colors by clicking on it, but that's about it. Okay. So we'll go back to our website. So that was a create a logo option. Now browser icon, the favicon. Now this is usually a .ico or .png format. And this is the image that shows up just at the top here beside where it says Squarespace or beside Udemy or this little D here. And it's also the image that's used by mobile devices when you save a website as a bookmark onto like your home screen. Now since Internet Explorer is such a terrible browser, some of the older versions of it didn't actually support PNG format. The recent ones do, but just to be sure, it's better to use a .ico format. Now there's not a lot of ways you can convert a PNG image to an ICO image while still keeping the transparency. So I actually found one called dynamic drive. So you just upload your .png file and it'll actually keep the transparency when it converts it. So you just create icon and then you would upload that just right over here where it says add a favorite con. And then finally we have the social sharing logo. So if somebody shares your website on, on social media, the icon that shows up would be whatever you upload right here. Now, if they share a blog post, it'll automatically take the thumbnail image of the blog post, but for the, all the other pages, it will use the icon you upload here. Okay. So let's go back to the previous menu and the next item is template. We've already covered that in the previous lecture. So I'll skip that. That's where you change the template. So next we have style editor and checkout page style editor. They're both very similar style editor. just lets you change colors, text, um, size and all that stuff. Whereas the checkout page is specifically for the checkout page. You'll see it in a second here. There we go. So next we have the lock screen. So you can actually password protect certain pages on your website. So if you're developing a certain page, you can keep it protected and so that nobody sees it until you're done. So this is basically styling for that page. So we'll go back and then we have the announcement bar. The announcement bar is what shows up at the very top of a website if you enable it. So let's say I type in big sale, it'll show up right up here and you can make that into a link that shows goes straight to your store. Okay. So we'll close this up. We'll disable this for now and we'll go back to the previous page. So next up we have the mobile information bar. So this is usually disabled by default. So when you enable it, you can either pick that it's dark or light. So when it's um, enabled, what you can basically show is email, phone number, location, and business hours. So this is actually something that shows up only when people visit on a cell phone on a smartphone at the very bottom. And it's something that doesn't really move. So it's always there. And it's an option for them to actually call you or look up locations. So just to show you how that would look on a mobile device. If you just look right here at the bottom, email, call, map, and hours, that'll actually always be on the screen no matter where they scroll. So that's kind of what the information bar will look like. So now let's go back. And next up on our menu is Squarespace badge. So if you click on Squarespace, it basically just says powered by Squarespace at the very bottom. Um, I wouldn't, I don't really know why somebody would enable that in the first place. So next up is custom CSS. So this is where you add any CSS that can alter the website, but it's not available as an option in the style editor. I'll go more into this uh, later on in the lecture. So for now, just know that it does exist. So finally we have advanced in here. There's actually only two options. So there's disable mobile styles, which basically makes your website not mobile friendly, which actually greatly affects your search engine optimization. So your page might actually go down in Google ranks. So definitely don't disable it. And then we also have the type kit kit ID. So this is if you have Adobe type kit, which gives you access to a lot of different fonts. It is a paid service. If you want it, you could always just put in your type kit ID here so you can use those fonts. So now that we've covered the advanced portion, if we go back, 
In the next lecture, we're going to cover what's in commerce and analytics. 